Hopefully, God bless everyone that's online. Hopefully, get they connect. I want to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. I want to give thanks to the Lord for all the things he has done today. This beautiful Sunday morning, or I should say afternoon now, that's, that is noon. Um, what the things that he has done for us throughout the week, we want to give thanks to the Lord. All the blessings, the protection, everything that he has done, we want to be grateful. We want to give glory to God. Today, um, before, I, before I begin, I want just want to say... Um, Prayer for uh, my family, the pastors. Um, they come down with um, with a cold, with the flu. So, and prayers for them. God bless them. And also prayer for uh, for a uh, we just got a uh, a child Amber Alert um, from Schenectady, a ten month old uh, baby, and I think and I have. Her name here. I have the PDF right here. Her name is Halo R. Brenton, 10 month old baby, um, female, right? And she was, uh, so Halo was seen on the 12th Street at Campbell Avenue in Schenectady around 9 15 on Saturday, March 9th. And she was wearing white sweatpants with brown and tan and tan flowers, long sleeve, light pink shirt with a butterfly design, and had a Minnie Mouse blanket. Amen. So we, I, I urge everyone that is watching this video, um, that my brothers and sisters, that we all band together and pray, pray for this little baby be found safe and unharmed. And back to uh, their back to her parents. We I pray that the Lord rescues this child, and she's not only the child that also has been killed. There's many many child children out there that are being kidnapped, that are being um, sold, and are, are are being trafficked, and all, and all these evil things. And so we pray that they be found. So I'm gonna pause here, and I'm gonna um, uh, initiate the prayer. For this uh, little girl, Halo R. Brenton. Father, we're here before you in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord God. We know, my Lord Jesus, we know that you can do anything and nothing is impossible for you. We pray at this very moment, Lord Jesus, for Halo, for Halo R. Brenton, Lord Jesus, this little girl, this little baby, Lord Jesus, she has no guilt. She has no guilt, my Lord Jesus. She has no idea what's going on. But my Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help the authorities, that you will locate this child, my Lord God, and bring her back to her parents, that she may be found unharmed, safe, alive, my Lord Jesus. I pray that you would use these authorities, my Lord God, and guide them to the right places, expose the location where this child is, my Lord God. We pray in your name, Lord Jesus. We pray, my Lord God, that she may be found, my Lord and we and 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 we're going to hear good news, Lord Jesus, that, that she was found, my Lord God, and give you the glory forever and ever, my Lord. I pray, Jesus. I pray that you will console the parents, my Lord, that they that they, Lord Jesus, also they they call out to you, my Lord God. They are in worry. They are in, des in desperation, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would have mercy upon them, and that you would forgive their sins, and that you would help and go out my Lord Jesus, and help these authorities that you would go and look to locate, to find the location of this child, wherever this child may be. Lord God, I pray, Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We must continue to pray for these children that are being, that are being kidnapped, that are being trafficked, because there are so many evil people out there that want to, that want to benefit, that want to benefit and gain money from of um by using and abusing these children and even committing um evil evil acts against these children so we pray for her so today amen today we're going to talk about in this uh on this sunday 
Bible study. I usually give the, this Bible study during the week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is on the book of Daniel. I go through, we, 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 we go through that door during those two days. But today, um, it pleased the Lord to give me the opportunity to give the, that Bible study as well on today on Sunday. Um, so we're going to go to the book of Daniel, and we're going to be in, in Daniel chapter, chapter 8. So bear with me. Okay. And we're going to talk about times and laws. Now, keep in mind, I do have the videos um, on YouTube, Pentecostal Church Refuge of Pete, uh, Refuge of Peace. It's on it's on YouTube. I'm up, I'm upload I upload them on, on videos, um, and they're also on Facebook. So if you want to look at, at if you want to catch up and look at the previous videos about the book of Daniel that study that we're going through, go ahead and take your time, um, and it would so that you can know what is it that we're going through, to, what what we're talking about here, you know, today. So it's pretty hard for you to start wherever we left off without knowing what what's what what happened in the previous chapters. So you have to go through this by in in, in order. So I, I, I um, label them in order so that you can just, you know, keep track. And, and also that w wherever you left off, you can start from there. So it says here, the little horn of, Daniel's, of Daniel chapter 7 shall, uh, shall think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until, until time and times and the dividing of time, or three and one half years. The rabbis understood by times and laws the Hebrew Sabbaths and festivals and the law which re regulated them. Now, as these times and laws will be reestablished when the Jews return to their own land and rebuild the temple, they will be in force when the, the Antichrist, which is the little horn, shall make a covenant with them for one week or seven years. But in the middle of the week, the Antichrist will break the covenant. This is in Daniel chapter 9.27. And substitute the worship of himself for the worship of Jehovah, thus causing the Jewish sacrifices and ob oblations to cease. And in his desire to annihilate all Jewish institutions, he will think he will think to change all Jewish times and laws. And this he will do for the for the remainder of the week or the three and a half years. So this is talking about the seven year tribute, the seven year great tribulation, that the that. That, that Israel is going to be going through, not the church. The church is not going to be, not the church of the Lord is not going to be going through the great tribulation. This is meant now for the Israelites. And this is talking about this one individual, the satanic individual, Antichrist, this um, supposedly the savior of this world to, um, to save this world from chaos of, of, you know, financial chaos and, and things like that. That that ruler is that ruler is satanic. This is satanic and then he is going to assume the throne that the a temple is going to be built on in Jerusalem. In the three in the after in the end of the three and a half years, he's going to assume that throne and then stop the worship um, to the Lord and, and and have them worship him. Mind you, again, this is not about the church, but this is about this is about Israel now. So now we're going to go into the beast. The iron teeth of, of this fourth beast identifies it with the iron legs of the image, or as we have seen with the Roman Empire in its past stage. The ten horns correspond to the ten toes of the image, or the last stage of the Roman Empire. So we see that this nondescript beast represents the Roman Empire in its first and last stages, but does not reveal what happens between the two stages. Now, as the book of Revelation gives us in chapter 6 and 19 inclusive, the details of what is to happen during Daniel's 17th, 17th week, the period covered by the toes of the image 
and that is represented on Daniel's fourth wild beast by the ten horns, we must turn to the book of Revelation to get further light as to the beast and the little horn. Let us compare Daniel's beast and John's beast. It's a little blurry there, but that's a sort of description. So Daniel's beast. And this is in 7, 7, 8. Chapter 7, verse 7 through 8. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, the fourth beast, and dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue, the three preceding beasts, with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came among them another little horn, before whom were there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and mouth speaking great things. And this is, and, and this is mean that this little horn, or rather the Antichrist, will be given um, the power to uh, convince, will be, will be speaking blasphemy, blas, uh, blasphemy, and will, giving, will be given the power to convince, and he would be speaking very eloquently, better than I am, <laughs> Currently, but he would be speaking very eloquently to convince people to turn to him. He's the one that will save them. He's the savior, and he will. He will. He will be the one that will provide everything for them. That would get things back to normal, back back to the norm, so to speak, right? Um, and this is all, and 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 <clears throat> provide a kind of a false peace, a a peace that people think, oh, this is the man. This is the right guy. This is the guy that's going to lead us to prosperity into the future, um, but what the people don't realize that this is Satan. And so, and continues to say in, Ch in Daniel 7, chapter 7, verse 23 and 25, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread down and break, in, and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings and shall arise. Another king shall rise after them, and he shall be uh, diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his, into, into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So now we're this is that that was Daniel's beast. Now we're gonna compare it to John's John's beast. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of the blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as, were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, and it, and it were wounded, and it were, were, were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And there was given, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, and he forty two months, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The saints are is, is, is Israel, not the church. Again, the church has been taken up, taken up away from this earth. Now the church has no, um, uh, has no uh, relation to what's going to happen in the great tribulation. The saints that the, that, that the Lord is talking about here is Israel. So the Antichrist is going to make war with Israel, with the saints. In comparing these two beasts, we find that they both come up out of the sea. As Daniel's beast come out of the great sea, the Mediterranean, Daniel chapter 7, 2, and John was a prisoner on the Isles of Patmos when he had his vision, an island of the same sea. Both beasts came from the same lo lo locality. Both of these beasts were, were utterly unlike any beast we have ever heard. Daniel's beast was dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron, t iron teeth and nails of brass. 
while John's beast was like a leopard with the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. As Daniel's beast represented the fourth kingdom, the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire, it is, ev it, it is evident that its characteristics, as given above, describe the old Roman Empire, while the characteristics of John's beasts describe the future Roman Empire. We know that the old Roman Empire was strong exceedingly, and it grip, in its grip and power were like a beast with great iron teeth and claws of brass. And from the description of John's beast, we learn that the Roman, that the future Roman emperor shall embody all the characteristics of the fourth, wire, a uh, fourth world empires, as seen in its leopard-like body, its feet of a bear, and its mouth of a lion. And as the body of an animal is the largest part of, part of it, the leopard or the Grecian character of the beast will probably pre, pre, uh, pre, uh, ponderate that both beasts have 10 horns reveals the fact that they will both be in existence at the time indicated by the 10 toes of the image, which will be just before the setting up of the stone or millennial kingdom of Christ. We are told that the 10 horns of Daniel's beast stand for 10 kings and the 10 horns of John's beast stand for the same. From this, we see that both Daniel and John foresaw that the Roman Empire was to be eventually divided into 10 federate 10 federated kingdoms. While both beasts have 10 horns, they differ in that John's has seven heads, while Daniel's had but one. And among the 10 horns, or on Daniel's beast, there came up a little horn, which is not seen amid the 10 horns of John's beast. This, as we shall see, are features that have referred to the last stage of the beast, and show that we cannot understand the last stage of the beast without carefully comparing Daniel's and John's beast for the little horn of Daniel's beast plucks up three of the ten horns and destroys them or takes their kingdom away, their kingdom away, a thing that John omits to tell us. Again, the anti-Christian character of Daniel's beast is seen in its little horn, whose conduct corresponds with not a part but the whole of the of John's beast, and at the same length of time for Daniel's time and times, and the dividing of time is equal to John's forty and two months, or three or three and one half years. And both beasts make war on the saints of the Most High and blaspheme his name. From this comparison, we see that the similarity of the two beasts, that they must be studied together to fill out the picture. The little horn. Now we're going to focus on the, on the little horn. In our study of prophecy, we lay much stress on the second coming of Christ, forgetting that there are two other comings of persons that are just as monumentous as Christ's coming. The first is that of Antichrist, and the other is that of Satan. In both the Old and New Testaments, we are told of a mysterious and terrible pers personage who shall be revealed in the last times, or the closing days of the dispensation. He is called by various names in the Old Testament the Assyrian, the wicked, and Isaiah, king of Babylon, Lucifer, king of, king of Tyrus, and Ezekiel, the little horn, and Daniel, the king of fierce continents, the prince that shall come, the willful king, the man of sin, the son of perdition, that wicked, and a Christ, the beast. And this is the New Testament. The prophet Isaiah sees the Antichrist as the Assyrian. In Isaiah 11, chapter 11, verse 4, a chapter which is evidently messianic, we read that among other things which the Messiah will do, he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He, slay, he shall, shall slay the wicked. The word translated the wicked is in the singular number. A singular word, wicked, not wicked, wicked. And cannot refer to wicked persons in general, but to some, but to some one person who is conspicuously, conspicuously wicked. The expression is strikingly like that of Paul in 2 Thessalonians 2, chapter 2, verse 8. Then shall that wicked he revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
And it is evident, and it is, and it is evident that Isaiah and Paul refer to the same individual who can be no other than the Antichrist. In Isaiah fourteen four through in Isaiah chapter fourteen verse four through seventeen, there is a description of the king of Babylon who shall smite the people in his wrath, and the rule, and and rule the nations in anger. He is called Lucifer, the son of the morning, and he, and his fall is described. There has never as yet been such a king of Babylon. It must therefore refer to some future king of Babylon, when Babylon shall be rebuilt as we have seen in it. It is, is to be, verses 12 and 14, evidently referred to Satan, here called Lucifer. And are descriptive of him before his fall. But as he is to incarnate himself in the Antichrist, who will be future king of Babylon, they explain the source of pride and, and, and presumption of Antichrist, which will lead to his downfall, as it did to Satan's. The prophet Ezekiel has similar view of the Antichrist under the name of the King Tyrus. And as the future Roman Empire will include both Tyrus and Babylon, the Antichrist will be both King of Babylon and King of Tyrus. We now come to the little horn of Daniel. And as Daniel had three visions of him, we will have to anticipate in part the description given of him in chapters 8 and 11. We have already considered him in this chapter. In the vision of the ram and he goat, Daniel saw a great horn between the eyes of the he goat broken off. Four notable horns came up in its place, and upon one of them, one of these appeared a little horn. So, <clears throat> the this this passage. I'm going to stop here for a minute because I know there was a lot there, but this passage here is very clear. The word of God is very clear. Who? To, of to of of identifying who is the antichrist the antichrist is a is 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 satan himself incarnate human being as you all as we all know the enemy is always trying to copy jesus christ in everything that the lord does um the lord came to, uh, the lord came to us being fully human and fully god right well, Satan is trying. Satan is doing the same thing, trying to be, trying to be fully human and also, you know, fully him. <laughs> Satan being evil, um, he's always trying to copy the things that the Lord does, and so in this case here, what's going to happen is that in the future, in the Great Tribulation, in the, in that seven year in that seven year Great Tribulation, the enemy Satan is going to is going to incarnate in, incarnate himself. To be being fully human, and as he's going to and going to be called the Antichrist, deceive the entire world, those that will be deceived, and try and 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 to and to assume, trying to assume and establish his empire, his throne, to be the dominant ruler of this world. Now, many people may hear this kind of thing, and they, and they think, well, this is a kind of, some kind of movie or some kind of uh, some, you know. Uh, fantasy or whatever folklore but no this is actual events true thing this is actually tr actual events and true um, uh, um, moments that's going to take place here on earth and people are going to see those going to get left behind those that are the those that are that are unbelievers those that will get left behind these people are the the people of this world are going to see this entity rise up and take control of the world and establish a 10 federated kingdom okay so now we're back in chapter Daniel chapter 8 verse 9 through 11 and out of one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceedingly great toward the south Egypt and toward the east, Babylonia, and toward the pleasant land, Palestine, which is, again, Israel. <clears throat> and it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts and stars, angels to the ground, and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him, the little horn, the daily sacrifice was taken away in the place of his, the, the prince of the host, century was cast down so he took over the sanctuary he took over the temple he put trying to put his throne there 
In this interpretation, the little horn, the angel Gabriel said, it continues to say, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressor are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and an understanding of dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. It shall be satanic, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Right? We're talking about the holy people, Israelites, not the church. I want to make that clear. Israel, not the church. The church has already been taken up. Talking about the Jew, the, the the Israelites, and through this and through his policy, and also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of uh, princess, uh, and by, but he shall be broken without hand. <clears throat> Quite a few Bible scholars claim that this little horn is not the same as the little horn that arose amid the ten horns of the fourth wild beast, but that that it represents Antiochus Epiphanes, who in uh, 166 BC desecrated the temple altar at Jerusalem by erecting an idol altar upon it and offering swine flesh thereon. But the description of, the, of this little horn and his conduct does not accord with that of Antioch Epiphanes by but thus with the little horn of the fourth wild beast. Antiochus Epiphanes never cast down any of the, of the host of heaven or magnified, him, or magnified himself against the prince of the host. Neither did he stand up against the prince of princes, which is Christ. Nor was he broken without hand, for he died a natural death at Tabe in 165 BC. The angel Gabriel distinctly states <clears throat> that the vision belongs not to the time of Epiphanius, but to the time of the end, in Daniel chapter 8, 17. That is, to the end of the times of the Gentiles, which is still future. And Gabriel also added that his mission was to make, to make known to Daniel what shall come to pass in the last end of indignation. Gabriel is the messenger of God. He is another um, <clears throat> angel. He is a, he is a cherubim, uh, a messenger of of, of the Lord, a great Gabriel went and revealed this to, uh, to, to Daniel. Um, the last end of indignation or the great tribulation. So we see that as the little horn of Daniel chapter 8, verse 9 through 12 and 23 to 25, synchronizes as to time, the time of the end with the little horn of the fourth wild beast of Daniel that they both refer to the same person, the Antichrist. Daniel also had another foreview of the little horn in his vision of the willful king, but, we'll, but we will not stop here to consider it as it will be explained in the exposition of chapter 11. Now, let's turn to uh, Paul's foreview of the little horn. All right, this is not Paul. And I'm going to turn to Second of Thessalonians, chapter two, verse three through twelve. I'll read that. Second of Thessalonians, chapter two, three to twelve. It says here, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and that the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who, ex who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the, out of the way. All right, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, and that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So these are the people, <clears throat> excuse me, th these are the people that will be given into this delusion and believe in, in, and believe in the Antichrist. It says here, and with all, verse 10, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might, that they might be saved. So for this reason, 11, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. So, a, so they will be, so they will be uh, in this kind of delusion that they, that, that, is, that they are going to believe in the lie. They're going to believe in the Antichrist. That's why it is going to be very, very, very hard. It's possible, but it's going to be very hard to be saved uh, in the great in the great tribulation, there are Christians that are saying, "Oh, I'll just wait. I'll just go through the great tribulation. I'll just, I'll I'll accept the Lord there, and and and, and I'll be saved." No, that that is the that is the the most wrong thing you can say. Because there's going to be there's going to be a satanic uh, atmosphere on this uh, 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 that's going to be revealed, that's going to be felt in the entire world. It's going to be it's a delusion, a confusion that people are going to fall into and accept the lie, accept the Antichrist. And so by you, by you saying, all right, and this is for the Christian believer, um, by you saying that you would just wait, that you would just go through the Great Tribulation, you're you're basically playing a Russian roulette. You know, it's it's the the only way the only way that you would get saved is by you escaping or letting yourself be killed and not accepting the you know the mark of the beast by letting yourself be decapitated. That's that's the way. By not by not bending the knee to the Antichrist or anything, or anything like that, they will persecute you. It will be a government, a world government control, a world government surveillance. They will track you down. The technology is there; it's available. Right now, in China, is being used, but that technology will be even more sophisticated, more advanced, and would know the location of where you are. There will be probably the left behind um, believers, Christian believers, uh, have underground churches uh, like we, like they are right now in other parts of the country, in these hostile countries that that hate the you know the word of God and persecute Christians. Well, think of it now worldwide. I mean, I'm talking about even here in in. Even here, in this country, in the United States, I'm talking about when the Antichrist takes over, there's going to be a massive persecution, a massive persecution towards um, Christians that were left behind that still, that finally said, yeah, I need to repent and I need to, they can do all that <clears throat> and they can congregate, but now they need to, Listen, the message that the 144,000 are going to be uh, given the gospel, the, not, not the gospel, but rather the, the, a preaching of um, the, the, the kingdom has come. Okay? That's another, that's another topic that we're going to get into in the book of Revelation. But these Christians that are now on, on the ground, they're going to be persecuted the worst possible way they're going to be persecuted and so it's going to be 
very hard, very hard to get saved in the Great Tribulation. But there are going, there are, there will be those that will get saved. It's just you need to let your head be cut off. You need to and not denounce Jesus Christ because they're going to add, they're going to make you. They're, they're going to try to make you denounce Jesus Christ, to denounce him, to blaspheme him and all that. They, they're most likely, and most likely they will, they're going to torture you to denounce him until eventually they'll just cut your head off. That's how it is going to be in Great Tribulation. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be nice. There's going to be this false hope of three years of prosperity and all this other thing, but that's all false. That's going to end. We're gonna to get to that in the in the seven year in the um, in the book of uh, in the book of Revelation. All this stuff that we're seeing here today is just preparation. The world the World Economic Forum. What they're talking about about having someone come and fix the you know the economy and prosperity and all this other thing. All this is just preparation of what is to come. Right now, what's holding the Antichrist back, you know, the enemy back, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, because the church of the Lord is still here. We are still here. And so the Lord is giving us opportunities. Opportunities day after day to come to the Lord to repent, to come to the Lord. Nations to turn back to him. For souls to turn back to him, to, to accept Jesus Christ. Opportunities that the Holy Spirit is giving is giving us to come back to Christ, and and you know more to come. We're going to talk about this more in the Book of Revelation. So, <clears throat> I just read um, Second Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three to twelve, and here Paul calls the little horn of Daniel by three different names: the man of sin. We just read that. The son of perdition, right? And that wicked. The name son of perdition is not without sig significance. It may help us to locate the origin of the little horn or antichrist. The name is used but twice in scripture. It is first used by Christ of, of Judas and here of the, of the antichrist. In Genesis 3.15, God said to the serpent, Satan, I will put an enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Now the woman's seed was Christ, then the serpent's seed must be Antichrist. And as Christ was born of a virgin by the Holy Spirit, so Antichrist will be born of a woman, not necessarily a virgin, but by Satan. You see, so this is what I meant before, that Satan always tries to copy what the Lord does, right? This is... And this is to deceive many. I mean, you, know, you, you, you need to catch these things. You need to catch what, you need to have a good foundation of the word of God so that enemy cannot deceive you. You need to have the Holy Spirit, right? So this is no new view for it has been held by many of God's spirit, spiritually minded children since the days of the Apostle John who have been looking for the man to, to lie born among men who should be a demon man upon whose Mother, Satan, would descend and fill her totally and surround her totally and possess her totally within and without so that the creature born of her would be totally depraved. If the sons of God, angels, would take on, the, the, would, would take on them the form of, of men and cohabit with the daughters of men in the, in, in the days just before the flood and the offspring of that union were mighty men, men of satanic character whose wickedness brought on the flood, then why cannot Satan assume the form of a man and be the father of by some woman of the Antichrist? And could not and could not such a person be properly called the son of perdition or of Satan? Uh, for a while, perdition is a place, and Judas and Antichrist are the sons of perdition in a special sense, for they are the sons of the author of of perdition, Satan. And I'm going to stop here. I'm going to start here till next time. I'm going to highlight this. Uh, there you go. Okay. Stop here and I'm going to save. Okay. But 
what we just read is what I've been trying is what I've been we've been talking about is that that the Antichrist that's going to enter the world right right after the church leaves right after the Holy Spirit takes the church to Jesus Christ in the air and we go to the kingdom of God he's going to assume he's going to reveal his his identity we don't know his identity right now we don't know the identity of that individual of that satanic being born from Satan we don't know what's holding him back what's holding back the the enemy is the Holy Spirit so once the church is taken out from this earth that's when he gets that's when he is revealed he is revealed to the world because there's going to be chaos in this world once the church leaves, once the church has been taken up. Tens of tens of thousands and thousands, millions of people are going to disappear. No one, people are going to say, where are they, where, where, you know, where did they, where did they go? Where did they went? Did, did, you know, my husband or my wife or my children disappeared right in front of me. Women that are expecting, that are pregnant, even before they give birth, their babies are going to disappear in their, in, in, in their womb. I mean, think about that, All right? Cause these are, those are children, those are babies that have, that have no, that have no conscious of, of, or understanding of sin. Pure minds, right? Pure minds, pure thoughts, they're just babies. And, that's just going to be totally, totally chaos. Mothers are mothers are just going to go. Mothers and fathers are just going to go crazy. Everything's just going to go nuts. The whole world is just going to be upside down. And so, the, and so the people are going to be looking for someone to console them, for comfort, someone to lead them out of the, you know, out of that chaos. Then enters the Antichrist, that demon man, that's that that satanic being as the one as the person to look to that's going to take them out of that chaos and take them to prosperity this false prosperity and there's going to be these preachers that we see today these false these false preachers that we see today this uh, right for the god they're going to say yeah that is the man that is the messiah that's him the, you know the, the 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 false prophet right all these other religious organizations in, in institutions are going to say, yeah, that is the man, that is the Messiah, deceiving even more people. So all of this, this is hard to this is hard to say, this is hard to hear, right? But this is the truth. This is this is why the opportunity is now, is now, is now, is now, before the great tribulation, before the great peril comes. The opportunity is now for you to accept Jesus, to come to Christ, for you to come to Christ, accept Jesus, and escape. What is to come? Escape what is to come. Father, oh, uh, before I enter into prayer, uh, we're going to start service at 1.30. Um, I pray that you would also join us for that, for that wonderful service we're going to have. Father, we're here before in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to give you thanks and glory to your name. My Lord God, we just went through some important things of your word, Lord, of what's to come in the future, of what's about to take place, my Lord God. I pray that you will give the opportunity to many souls out there, Lord Jesus, that are prop that are most that are hearing this message, that are hearing this Bible study. Give them the opportunity, my Lord God, to hear your word and to accept you as as their one and only Savior, my Lord God. Don't allow them to cover their ears, Lord Jesus. Don't allow them, Lord Jesus, to, to ignore this, this message, my Lord God, because those are souls that can still be saved, my Lord Jesus. Please, I pray in your name, my Lord God, that you would rescue them from the depths, from the gates of hell, my Lord. I pray in your name, Lord. And I also continue to pray and, 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 and remind you, Lord Jesus, of Halo, our bread, and the little child, the little baby, Lord Jesus, that she has no fault, my Lord God, that you would rescue her and that you would guide the authorities to her location, Lord. I pray, my Lord God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless everyone.